Companies need a brilliant workforce to get ahead and succeed. The Level 3 Foundation Certificate in People Practice is designed for individuals that wish to enhance their people skills and use them in the workplace. As a people professional, your role is to make certain the workforce is effectively managed, their skills boosted, with a clear path to grow. The course in people practice is a recognized certificate and not just focuses on human resources but also on strategic expertise. Increase your personal skills and strengthen your growth and development. Global Edulink is a first-class leader in the education industry and delivers high-quality materials and resources, outstanding customer services and a personalized learning experience. Hello, I'm Jonathan Holt. I'm an experienced tutor, teacher and educational and careers advisor in management with a focus on human resource management. The certificate offers a broad understanding of key HR areas equipping you with the confidence to demonstrate your knowledge, gain CIPD membership. Receive a certification that validates a much sought after skill. Explore the 21st century employment markets and enjoy an exciting career in a wide range of industries. Progress to the next level and be a standout, successful, people professional. True leadership lies in guiding others to success. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, your Gateway to HR Excellence CIPD introduction session. Uh, my name is Natalie. I'll be your webinar moderator this evening. Hope everyone's had a lovely day. Uh, just to let you know, this is being recorded, so don't worry if you join a little late or if you do have to go off early, but hopefully you don't have to. Um, and just in general, you'll be able to refer back to this for your learning. So we'll be sending you this whole webinar recording um, uh, shortly after we finish. Uh, so yeah. Yes, that is what we have on this evening. If you can't hear me at any point as well, um, just type in the chat and then we can see if we can help you out and rectify any issues. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is what we have on for this evening, everyone. Uh, we've got a just a small icebreaker. I'll go around to a couple of you, to a few of you, um, see who we've got in the room because we have le learners from all over the globe. So it's really exciting to get to know you guys, see where you're at, see where you're joining us from and all of those things. Um, so then we'll go through getting to know your expert facilitator tonight. Uh, what is CRPD and its qualifications? Uh, we'll look at the career paths surrounding that as well um, and the personal benefits that CRPD can offer you, as well as our experts' view on selecting a proper learning platform for yourselves. And uh, then we'll have a question and answer session with our expert facilitator, as well as our course advisor. So definitely make use of that time whilst we are all live so that you can get the most um, knowledge extracted out. And then um, towards the end, we've got some exclusive discounts that um, if you've joined this webinar tonight live, um, that's sort of the benefit of doing it. Then we've got some uh, yeah limited time offers. So that'll be good to see what we've got in store today. Uh, so that's just the rundown of our agenda. We're here till 7 p.m. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Um, okay, yes, before the icebreaker, here is our expert facilitator tonight, everyone. We have Dr. Paul Turner. Um, so he's um worked in XHRD, UK banking and financial services. Um quite a while ago and then for about 17 18 years now he's been a business consultant as you can see um clients totaling 100 plus companies and 5000 plus managers so really big scale there and he's the winner of the prestigious international hr stevie award um if you guys do or don't know what that is but it's great it's a, an american award award i found out um and there you can see in the bottom left hand corner is his QR code for his LinkedIn profile. So if you've got a tablet or your phone on you, um, or however you're watching this, then you can take a screenshot or take a picture of it, and that will take you straight to uh, Paul's LinkedIn. Um, and it's always great to connect with people. That is how I found my team here at Global Edge Link. So you never know what can happen from a LinkedIn connection. Uh, so yeah, that's my little spiel on LinkedIn. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, but okay, there we go. Okay. We're going to move on to our, our little icebreaker now. Um, let me just check. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I'll make sure everyone has slide access for later on. Thank you. Uh, but yes, so for our icebreaker now, um, I'll just go around to a few of you, see who we've got in the room. And uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, that would be great. And sort of let us know uh, where you're at in your career um what you'd like to get out of today that kind of thing and then sometimes we can tailor the the webinar to you guys a bit better so um 
Lisa, are you there? Would you like to unmute yourself? Let us know where you're joining from. I'm from South London, by the way, guys. Uh, yeah, let us know where, where you're at at the moment. Also, I do understand some people can't always unmute themselves. Maybe they're surrounded by noise or they've got headphones in or they're on the train or something. Um, if that's the case, don't worry. Um, but you can just, if you'd like to introduce yourself via the chat as well, you can do. Also, if you have questions, um, I can see some more people joining now as well. If you have questions, you can pop them in the question and answer box if you don't mind. It makes it a bit easier to um keep track uh so i'm not sure if lisa can talk what about danny are you there would you like to unmute yourself and introduce yourself ah danny's at work okay no worries no worries um yeah what industry are you guys in that's always um handy to know as well we like to know uh what about harris would you like to introduce yourself and sorry i know some people are joining late so <laughs> don't want to uh put you on the spot but it's just just sort of so we can see who we got in the room and get to chat to each other and sort of help paul and shallow for later on um yeah harris would you like to unmute yourself and let us know where you're joining from and where you're sort of at at the moment your industry. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Uh, so currently I'm joining in from uh, UK, uh, London. Uh, I basically am looking for a transition into a BA role and I'm looking for my new opportunity. And I hope this gives me some direction. Okay, great. Thank you, Harris. Thank Thanks you. for that introduction there. Um, great. Hopefully we can have a couple more before we move on. Um, Teo, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Ibi Teo. I'm presently in Newcastle in UK. I just finished my master's for University of Sunderland in my resources management. So I pray I'm able to get one or two things to add to what I have from this webinar. Oh, Thank great. You. Thank you. Thank you, Taya. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, sure. And OK, I'll go around to one more person. Um, Aiden, are you there? Would you like to unmute yourself? Or maybe not. Um, Okay, no worries. Right, we'll move on. If you guys can't talk or anything, um, or if you just want to say hi, you can do in the chat. Uh, but yes, okay, let's move swiftly on. Um, okay, so this is the part where I'll be handing over to Dr. Paul. Uh, Paul, you should have screen access now. Um, let me know if it's if you have any troubles. But uh, yeah, over to you, Paul. Thank you, Natalie, and uh, good to good to hear from Teo and Harris. As Natalie has said, please use the chat It's uh, if that's the method of communication you need to use today. But I was really interested to learn there that from Teo and Harris, certainly that this is an exploratory uh, session for them to, to see how this might fit into their future careers. So whether it be London or Newcastle, I'm in Shrewsbury at the moment, which is... Um, some people don't know where Shrewsbury is, but it's in Shropshire, which is near the Welsh border. So that's where, where I'm at this evening. Great to be with you. Let's start off really looking at um, HR in, in overview. And what we can see here is that there are a number of uh, functions of HR that come through this. Uh, and whether it be uh, recruitment and selection, we would all know that because many of us, all of us, in fact, probably have been through that recruitment and selection, um, possibly when we've gone for a job, maybe when we've recruited ourselves. Uh, and then you've got payroll and administration. One of the most important things about getting things right in HR is getting the payroll correct. I mean, we want to do a lot of exciting things. But to do the exciting things, we need to get the basics right as well. And making sure people's pay is correct is very important. Uh, and then over on that right hand side, we've got areas like performance and um, discipline and grievance. Uh, and this will involve, of course, 
employment law uh, and, and the human resource development this is learning and development this is training this is education and all of that means that in the middle there there are several roles that uh, exist in hr and we'll talk a little bit about these roles in due course but many of these roles are emerging they're new roles so whatever you uh, really whatever your interests are career wise you'll probably find a niche a role in hr that will match your requirements so a little bit about the cipd the cipd is essential to our programs and um, obviously it's very important that people who go through a program like this uh, are student members of the CIPD. This is the professional body in the UK, but it has a, a much wider reach than the United Kingdom. It does stretch out into many other international countries and it gives advice and standards and guidance around HR, learning and development, organisational development. Uh, it sets the professional standards for more than 160,000 members globally. And in the words of its chief executive, Peter Cheese, people at the centre of it all. If we want the best performance from our organisations, we have to look at after our people. And that's why HR is such a, a fantastic place to work, to be involved in. Digging a little bit more down onto the CIPD profession map, um, what you'll find is the CIPD around this purpose is wrapped uh, principles, evidence-based and outcomes-driven approach. Now, then when we go out, we have to look at it in three ways, really. Core knowledge. So there is a need for HR professionals uh, to, to have core knowledge, whether that be about people practice or technology or change or culture. And then to put that knowledge into practice, you need then, of course, to understand the core behaviours that an HR professional should aspire to and meet. And there will be uh, lots of uh, areas here around ethics uh, and courage. It takes courage to be an HR person uh, because you have to challenge management. Um, you have to balance um, the, the, the requirements of uh, employees and management. Uh, and of course, passion is essential in any people-driven role. But then, of course, if you go into HR, yes, you will start off with what we're going to be talking about today, which is level three. But once you get those basic standards on board, then people can specialize. They can specialize in law. They can specialize in equality and diversity or reward or talent management or analytics. So there are lots of options for people who are considering an HR career. Uh, but those options really are predicated by having the education and knowledge around those baseline standards. And this is where the foundation certificate in people practice provides the bridge, the bridge to be able to access uh, HR as a profession. And so what I'm going to do now is to present you with an overview of CIPD level three. And I'd like you to perhaps use your chat box just to give any thoughts or insights that you may have as I walk through this. So rather than save your insight or thought for at the end, because by then you may well have forgotten it, just put it in the chat box and that will give us um, a hook maybe just to key into your particular interests. I'm particularly interested in what area of HR you may be considering um, at the moment. 
So let's have a look at level three. And the descriptors really are around a learner and potentially you actually having the factual, procedural and theoretical knowledge around HR. That means that you'll be able to interpret and evaluate relevant information. Uh, but it's also about awareness because in life, of course, we can't know everything. And in HR, as an HR professional, you cannot know everything. But what you will be able to do is be aware of all of the areas and therefore be able to direct people to those areas or to call on specialists if uh, that is needed. And what we'll do in level three is take you through uh, all of the different perspectives and approaches that are involved in HR. Uh, and so you'll gain a growing awareness around in, how to investigate, how to move forward with certain actions, how to use effective methods. Now, within level three, there are four mandatory core units, and these are they. Firstly, business culture and change in context. Secondly, principles of analytics. Thirdly, core behaviors for people, professionals. And finally, essentials of people practice. And what you'll find in these uh, mandatory units is that the latter one, essential to people practice, has more content because it is about actually the roles and the functions within HR. So have a think about those four and maybe just have a think about what are you drawn to? Uh, you've got to learn about all of them, but what are you drawn to in terms of your particular interests? And maybe put that on to chat. So let's have a look at the first one, business culture and changing context. Um, this is really about the external influences that, uh, that impact upon internal culture. So all businesses operate within a vortex and, 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 and obviously react to the external environment but the internal environment is the culture of the organization. And so this particular unit will develop an understanding of those key influences that can impact upon businesses and context. For example, if you've done business studies in the past, you know that there are certain models that businesses use to make sense of their environment. And that could be PESTEL, couldn't it be, really? Which, uh, or, you know, uh, SWOT models, where you look at the political situation, the economic situation, the social situation, the technical situation, the legal impacts, the environmental factors, and make shape of this. And this, all of this impacts upon workplace culture. And so, this particular unit will will look at the how the systems come together and help people learn, adapt, and develop in different ways. So let's have a look at some more detail on this particular unit. So it's in three parts. The first part is understanding the business environment. So this is primarily around the external nature of um, working as an HR professional. It's the external environment to the business. And therefore you'll be looking at how you can make sense of goals and planning, making sure the internal goals and planning relate to the external environment. And of course, HR, you could argue, HR's customers are the employees of the company, are the managers of the company. But the end customer, of course, is the, the customer that buys the products and services of the company. So anything HR does really needs to be linked 
albeit through internal customers, to the external customers, and that will be looked at. In that second area, this is how people's behavior in the workplace affects and shapes culture. So what you'll be looking at in this particular unit is how systems, people, all come together, structures, hierarchies, all come together to make a culture. And yes, every organization has several cultures, has subcultures. But in the round, organizations do tend to have a dominant culture. And this will be driven primarily by leaders, leaders and managers. And then thirdly, making sense of all this and understanding how to effectively manage change, planning and managing change, how HR professionals play their part within that change, and an understanding of the impact of change on people. So let's move on to principles of analytics. Now, this Really, uh, very often, some people think, oh, I've never thought about analytics as being something you would you would do as an HR professional. Uh, and, and I guess, yes, I mean, analytics, you would you would argue is more driven in other areas, but it's absolutely critical uh, in the area of HR because HR professionals have to propose change and change often requires money budgets and therefore that requires getting the support of leaders within the organization and to do that you need to understand the impact the evidence around this change so this particular unit will look at how you make choices and how you can use analytics to rationalize the decision making choices so you'll cover how evidence-based practice uh, provides informal and formal measures and outcomes, how you can use data measurement to inform decision making. Uh, and also, we will look at interpreting basic financial information and using critical thinking to actually really come to clear decisions, uh, the most appropriate decisions based on the evidence available. So this will cover uh, the role of analytics and other technology in working practices as well, as well as looking at risk management. So let's have a, a little bit deeper dig into the principles of analytics. So you can see from this that there are uh, two uh, main strands of this in this unit. So firstly, you've got to understand how evidence-based practice informs organizational measures and outcomes. So there's a big emphasis here on evidence. That is factual information um, and how you can use data to actually uh, bring this factual information, evaluate correctly, bring it into the right format to be able to make the decision. It's also important, of course, for using it to monitor um, trends to monitor the impact of strategies such as um, attendance records, such as sickness, such as how many learning hours are people doing, uh, the level of engagement in a company, the level of satisfaction. So there are many areas here that analytics can play a part in. Uh, and in this section, certainly the first part there, you'll be looking at common calculations and basic financial information that you can draw out of organized data, as well as looking at procedures, policies, that will help you to make sure you adopt an evidence-based approach. And then the second strand is, yes, analytics and the data is really important, but it's really important to make sure you gain value from it. So the second strand here will be how you can create value benefits um, for employees, for customers and the wider stakeholders. And therefore using the range of analytics to actually 
do this? And what does value mean? And where does value come from? And how do you define value uh, in that sense? And also, interestingly, um, for many of you, I think, you also touch on social media here. Uh, the, the growing impact and emergence of social media, not just on life, but on working life and how HR professionals uh, need to be aware of social media, both internally and externally, because they will have to manage the risks in this uh, area. So also working really as a people professional, what what are you adding value to the organization and how can you actually analyze that uh, around that? So some interesting points there. And uh, for many, it's quite a revelation to get into the analytics and to understand how you need analytics uh, in HR to show your worth and to show the benefit of the strategies and techniques. The next um, unit is core behaviors for people professionals. And uh, this talks about and focuses primarily on ethical practice and creating value. And ethics is becoming more and more important to HR professionals as the world changes and people's views and perspectives change with it. So you're going to develop insight into different approaches to customer focus, uh, whether that be employees or, or customers who are purchasing products and services and looking at it within the framework of the law. Yes, some things companies have to do because it's the law. Other things may not fall within the remit of the law, but it's important if you're adopting an ethical approach to to actually abide by standards that may not necessarily be illegal. So looking at the two, informal uh, ethics and formal legal responsibilities. And this will break down here, as you can see, into two main threads. One, understanding insightful approaches to supporting and maintaining ethics and professional practices. So you'll consider ethical principles here, how they can be of value to forming a culture within an organization, how you will need, how HR needs to conform consistently with the law, with regulations, with external regulatory bodies. And you could argue that the CIPD is an external regulatory body for the HR profession. And therefore, if you are a member of the CIPD, you will have to abide by their regulations and guidance. So that's just one example of the areas that uh, will be looked at in this particular unit. Uh, and, but also picking out the positive aspects of that around working relationships and building team morale. And the second is about promoting respect and inclusivity. Um, and this is where sometimes professional courage is necessary and a passion is required because HR professionals often have to step up and challenge managers around specific areas, making sure that there is a, 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 an equality approach to uh, the decisions that are made. So again, this will look at ethics. It will look at how you can model ways in which you can acknowledge sensitivity and respect others within a working context. And it gives opportunities for individuals to reflect on their own personal values and practices in this particular area, uh, highlighting the importance of, in today's environment, inquisitiveness. Uh, it's so important today. Change is all around us. We are in a very volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world that um, sometimes you need your core values to be able to make uh, intuitive decisions. So part of this will be reflecting on 
proactive approaches to developing, recording, and reflecting on your professional knowledge, skills, and experience. And then we come to essentials of people practice. Now, th this, as I mentioned, is the, the bigger uh, unit of the four. And this unit really starts to look at the fundamentals, really, of, of people practice. And what we see really around this is whether it's to do with employee life cycle, you know, the journey, the employee journey throughout the organization, uh, uh, and re the, in relation to that, the policies, the regulation, and law. So this is where we start to explore the more detailed aspects of HR. And this could be recruitment, talent management, reward and learning, development, all of these areas. So what you'll have an opportunity to do here, even at the standard entry stage into the HR profession, to start to think about which one of these topics do you are you guided towards, do you favor? Um, many of uh, my students and many of my colleagues in the HR profession uh, have stayed uh, as a generic HR professional, which means um, they deal with everything, the full uh, gamut of HR challenges. For instance, a HR business partner um, and, and an HR manager as such has to really be a generalist, uh, whereas other colleagues and other students are keen to move in and be a specialist in terms of specific areas, such as recruitment and selection. So this particular unit will give you an opportunity to consider uh, maybe what, what it is you, you might want to specialise in later. But the main essence of this will be to give you a basic understanding of each one so that you will be able to assist a company uh, in whatever way in these particular areas. So a little bit more content in this area and therefore there will be more tutorial hours devoted to this. The first thread is understanding the employee life cycle and the different roles within it. So in this particular area, you will look at the employee life cycle. We all have an employee life cycle. Uh, we start by joining the company, the onboarding process. Then we, we start the, the training to develop us, maybe to get more skills and to become more specialist and therefore also becoming a, a valued organizational member because we've been in the organization for a year or a few years and then we may go on the promotion pathway um, generally most people exit an organization dependent upon their career some people go through to retirement with one company today that's rare, isn't it? Most people, I think, are forecast in the world today to have at least seven to eight jobs in their lifetime. So this will enable you to explain the different methods and stages at the start of this employee life cycle um, and recruitment and selection and the different ways in which you can prepare information for the specific roles, whether that be job description or role description and the different methods that you can use to attract people. So recruitment is more about attraction. Selection is looking at the pool you've attracted of people and making the right choice. And then secondly, this is about how you can contribute to the effective selection and appointment of in individuals. The different selection methods that 
you can actually use and when it's appropriate to use them um, you need to think about selection criteria if you're going to look for a new team member then on what criteria are you going to shortlist them there are legal challenges here as well as ethical to ensure uh, equality diversity and so these areas uh, you do need to know about and they need to be brought to the fore within the organizational perspective. And also to be able to participate effectively in a selection interview, understanding how selection interviews can be done, the structure for them, as well as the records that are needed to be kept, including letters of appointment and even non-appointment for identified roles. And then you've got the legislation in the third thread here, which is around um, employment practices and, and how they affect employment relationships. So this is going to be looking at the importance of work-life balance uh, within the employment relationship and how it can be uh, influenced by legislation. So again, there's an underpinning aspect here of legislation that's very important and certainly over the recent years the concept has grown around well-being resilience and well-being in the workplace how you can help your employees uh, become more resilient how you can help them to have a good sense of well-being um, and obviously there's a lot to that topic and, and people really need HR to be able to create a culture that re respects and understands the importance of well-being. And then, of course, we talk about employee engagement. Employee engagement is critical to companies because the more engaged your people are in a company, the more you will achieve as a company, the more successful you will be. All of the research indicates that. Um, so how do you actually understand what your level of engagement is uh, and then of course what do you do about it once you know how can you increase the level of engagement bringing in uh, the impact the relationships with the managers because hr professionals have to work through work with uh, and support managers to achieve all of these things uh, and then of course uh, a, a little bit of work around legislation, the specifics and nuts and bolts, for example, uh, discrimination legislation and the need to adopt a diverse and inclusive and equal approach. And then in thread four, the importance of performance management in motivating and retaining individuals and um, the importance of goals and the factors that need to be considered within that. And of course, linked to that is reward uh, in attracting and motivating and retaining individuals. Uh, because reward needs to be aligned to performance. And then how do you help people improve their performance? How do you help people maintain their performance? So that's a little bit about understanding how to support others to develop skills and knowledge required to meet both of these objectives. So that's given you an overview of the four mandatory units. And I hope it's given you enough really to think about um, what you would enjoy doing. And again, I'd urge you to maybe interact on chat. Um, now, if you've got any thoughts around what do you think would be your favorite one or what's interesting to you or what excites you about maybe pursuing and moving forward in uh, a, an HR professional role. Because there are so many career paths, uh, you can use the CIPD level three qualification to become uh, an HR assistant administrator. Uh, and then of course, once you get experience in such a role, you can move up to an advisor or an officer or an HR manager or business partner. And, and of course, 
you know, I was fortunate enough to get to HR director. And, and, but we all start at a certain place. And not to forget the importance of learning and development. Maybe you like training and education or talent management, the recruitment and the retention of talent. There's other specialist roles, such as employee relationship specialists, and they may deal with um, unions or even engagement of um, employees. There's the OD, organizational development, uh, lots of work around change, change management. And then there's reward, compensation and benefit specialists. And you may well, of course, at the end of all of this and a great career in HR, uh, move into independent HR consultancy and maybe move into it earlier than I did. Uh, so it's also really good at CIPD level three for career changes, people who want to move forward into a different career, uh, such as HR, from one they've taken. So there are lots of benefits, personal benefits for, for doing the CIPD level three. You'll get professional recognition via the CIPD. It is a, a, a benchmark, a standard to career advancement and therefore more earning potential. Your expertise will improve considerably. The CIPD community, whether it be online or in room, will help you with networking opportunities. And of course, professional qualifications like the CIPD give you great flexibility because there's many people I know who've got CIPD qualifications and they are managers in operations in other areas, but they wanted to have this qualification because it helped them to understand the people aspects of their role. And you'll also get support and guidance from the CIPD as well as global edu, as well as credential validation. And business benefits uh, are many um, and aligned to the personal benefits, really. But professional development, your HR expertise, you'll understand and get to know better uh, and enhanced HR practices. You'll move on to strategic management. Uh, you'll get involved in employee development. All of these will enhance your value to the business. And therefore, businesses often sponsor these programs um, because it gives them a much greater detailed understanding and knowledge of HR. So then, of course, is the how, isn't it? How do you actually move forward? Um, uh, we're all very busy people in today's world. And so... The how is really about how you get to getting your CIPD level three. And for many of us, um, online is has got to be the, the way to go because of time pressures, family pressures, location. Uh, and so you need to think about how you select a learning platform. A learning platform is critical to your learning when, when you're doing it remotely. So first of all, think about the interactive learning experience. Do choose a platform that provides interactive learning experiences to engage learners. So this could be activities, case studies, quizzes, discussions, and lots of other areas. Do think about, is this learning platform giving me exam preparation support? Make sure that the learning platform offers exam preparation materials such as practice exams and sample questions. Adequate exam preparation is critical and crucial for successfully passing the CIPD certification exams. Now, the Global Edu platform provides all of these aspects. So do make sure that you do your research and ensure that that learning platform has all of these features. As well as really making sure that the reputation of the learning platform is at the level you would wish it to be. Read reviews from previous learners, recommendations, look for feedback on the platform's effectiveness, course quality and customer support. 
again with global edu you will find lots of ways to be able to check this and that will certainly i'm sure give you the assurance that you need to be able to do that so thank you for your attention and what we're going to do now is move into a question and answer session uh, with Sholo. And uh, please, I know uh, that Natalie will come in here also. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you for all that information, Dr. Paul. Uh, really insightful there. Hopefully you guys took some notes. But yes, now is the question and answer uh, session. So if you guys have any questions, please pop them in the question and answer box. Um, or alternatively, if you want to take yourself on mute, like some of you did in the beginning when you introduced yourself, um, it's sometimes easier that way to ask a question talking rather than typing it in, sometimes a bit quicker. So if you want to do that, then you can raise your hand. Uh, you can put the little raised hand or you can just go ahead and unmute yourself just hopefully it doesn't cut through with someone but um yeah any questions at this stage guys because yeah you may as well make use of um Paul and Shallow whilst they're here uh granted Shallow hasn't really spoken about um you know global edge link yet but if you have any questions about how courses run and exams and things like that then um Shallow will be your go-to as well uh but yeah let us know if you have any questions guys or any comments at this stage or anything you might be struggling to understand or yeah, just anything really. Don't think there's any questions at the moment. Maybe people are typing. Natalie, could could I just ask Harris? Harris, I know you joined uh, earlier. I, I if, if you can use your mic, it'd be really good. How did you find that? Did that fit in with your expectations? We're flipping the question and answer. I like it. Oh, wait, maybe. Oh, I think I think they might have had to go. Uh, well, they could, yeah, because I was just looking in the list. Uh, yeah, maybe they had to go off. But it's fine. We can send the uh, recording and maybe get feedback afterwards. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm just just having a look. And then we've got some new people. Some people have left. Some people have stayed. Like, we've got some new people joining along. But, yeah, I mean, some of you might have joined halfway through, um, you know, so you might have missed some bits. But from what you did see, do you have any questions? Um yeah or has it helped let us know um or have you had any like sort no. of frequently asked questions when people maybe sort of change career paths or like if yeah. they're new into the world yeah 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 I, I i think the the first step is the hardest natalie and uh very often um the, the one thing I find is that people defer very often the decision. Uh, and I, students always say to me, I wish I'd have done this several several months ago or several years ago. So I think the key thing is put the work in, put the research in, uh, and you know, set yourself a time limit on making a decision because otherwise you'll find time goes with your pressures, build, family, everything else there's never a good time yeah true we can sometimes like put ourselves off and delay it and but really like taking that first step is what gets yeah. us going yeah. and yeah it's so true thanks thanks for that Paul um okay well if there's no questions at the moment guys we can move on to um shallow she can tell us a bit about um you know how you know, our platform could be of benefit to you. And then you might have some questions off the back of Shallow's um, talk as well. Um, oh, Lisa said, I'm a student with Dr. Paul and love learning online. Lisa. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> yes, love it. Good little endorsement. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, Shallow, let's move on to you. Um, as I don't think there's any questions at the moment. If you have any questions while Shallow's talking, obviously feel free to pop them in the uh, Q&A box, guys, or raise your hand and we'll come back to you. Um, but yes, I'll hand over to you, Shallow, uh, one of our course advisors, Shallow Rebel. Thank you. Thanks, Natalie. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Paul, for that very insightful information on the People Practice course. And um, I think We've got a lot of information there. Most of most part of the first section is covered, so that was brilliant as well. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this evening. Uh, I'm Shalora Bell. I'm one of the host advisors from Global Edge Link. 
and I'm going to be quickly sharing with you information about how Global Age League as a learning platform can help you get through your CIPD course and how our qualification benefits are interactive and how they are reputable as well in terms of enrolling people, giving them support from start to finish uh, with assignment support, mental support and all your course information. So I'm just going to quickly run through that with you. Just to give you an understanding, as it is, the choice is yours, but we want to make sure that you're given with sufficient information so you can make an informed decision on the learning provider you would wish to select. So I'm going to quickly run through then about us. So that's first things first, and who are we? Uh, and Global Edge Link, we are an authorized uh, learning organization. We work with several uh, accredited awarding bodies in the UK, uh, and specifically for CIPD, it's the, it's the people management courses. We also work with BCS for business analysis, and then we have our business management courses accredited by the PSMB Tech, uh, and of course, Axlos and People Search for our project management courses. And there's a whole lot, a thousand courses mentioned on, uh, on this a slide here, but could be more than that as well. Uh, so who's counting, really? But yeah, that's that's our passion to make sure that all our courses are up to date. It's current. It's professionally available for anyone who's interested, and we have a whole wide variety that we cover in our course our portfolio. And just as the, it says, we have over five hundred thousand students across the globe. This includes all categories of, of courses and people from all over the world as it is. Um, so that's uh, one of the wonderful things because we've been in the industry for over 10 years and we've been able to um, you know, serve people as much as we can. Uh, you can certainly go through our trust pilot reviews and you can read for yourself on the information that our learners have provided and also several details on the YouTube channel where you can find out about more information about courses as well. So yes, of course, there's 150 specialized student panel that we have um, for several sectors and as well as experienced people such as Dr. Paul, who's also in our tutor panel, which we're privileged to have. So that's us as a company. Um, so um, let me then quickly run through the course and the benefits that we have for you. Now, just like uh, Dr. Paul mentioned, we thrive to provide you a very interactive learning experience. So the course that's provided to you for the CIPD Level 3 Foundation, uh, it comes with 12 months access. So you get a, a host of video lessons and there's lecture notes. There's also assessments and activities throughout the learning progress. So we provide you a calendar that you can work with on our course. So once you enroll, you exactly know when is what and what topics are covered in each of our live online sessions. So you're not limited to a self-study program. You're able to attend our live online sessions, interact with the tutor, get in touch with our mentor, get your questions clarified and follow the timetable that we have for you. But given a situation where you're unable to attend uh, in one of our sessions, you can certainly get the recordings for you or you know, schedule for another one. So that's absolutely available. Uh, you can speak to our customer support, uh, program support team who will be able to help you through that. So, and yes, of course, it's interactive. There's question and answer, there's webinars. But in addition to that, uh, we'd also provide you support in terms of your assignments. So we have a mentor panel. Uh, who will be able to guide you on the assignment count, the number of words that is required. Uh, if there's certain things that you want, you know, to be changed, to make it, you know, to fine tune the last bit of things, so there is a formative assessment and also a summative, uh, sorry, formative feedback and summative feedback provided to you. So that again is pulling everything together so to make sure you get through your certifications properly. So that's uh, the other support that we provide. Um, and as 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 all of you know, uh, it is it, one of the routes for you to get become a CIPD member is through the qualification route and that's what this course is providing you. So once completing this program, you will be able to add associate CIPD member uh, next to your name. So that's another uh, post nominal CIPD member will be one of your added advantages by, by completing the CIPD course. So that's also one of the benefits uh, that, that we have available for you there. So it's all certified, it's through CIPD. So everything that you come, come across the course curriculum, it's assessed, it's accredited by them. So rest assured, everything works well for you there. Um, so yes, as I just spoke about the live online session, we also give you a few additional things. So we have several topics uh, on HR topics we provide you as free courses. So we have a section on interviews, uh, on how to give feedback, uh, termination process, and also the payroll process. There are additional free courses we've included just for an added advantage there, added knowledge. Um, so that's all part of our course package for you. And then, of course, affordable pay monthly plan. We know the course prices can be a bit on the budget. So we also give you a, a 10 month plan. So you start off with a small amount and then you just keep paying as you study. So you don't have to take a break uh, or anything at all. You just continue working, pay for whatever that you can as flexibility is also provided. So 
that's just about a quick, quick uh, information in a nutshell, really, about the course benefits uh, that we provide you at Global Edge Link for your CIPD Level 3 course. So I'm going to move there. And I think here's the details on the, the course price. So that's how it is. The cost is 1199 But let me remind you that this cost also includes the CIPD student membership. So in order for you to start your CIPD course, the foundation level, you need to be a student member. So without any additional cost, you will, we will enroll you for membership as well. And that's the price there, which is 1199 This includes your course access, your mentor support, uh, your our live online sessions that will be available for you. That's for the whole 12 months, uh, including assessments and all of that. Um, so it's, yes, we also can provide you a 10 month installment plan. So you break this cost, so you pay about 90 pounds or what was affordable for you initially. And then we will break the re remaining course fee over 10 months. So that's about an advantage. And that's a special offer that you can make use of. Um, yeah, so that's about it. And uh, yeah, if anyone is interested uh, to find out more details, please do let us know. Uh, and at the end of this uh, event, obviously I'm going to send you some information over about the courses, the links, and also further reading materials that can help you. And again, you can get in touch for more information. Right. And that's it from me. Well, perfect. So that's at the end. Oh. Right? Okay, thank you so much, Shalo. Thanks for that information there. Um, yeah, so yeah, if you guys want to make use of that discount, then please do. And if you have any other questions, here's our contact details. Um, if you suddenly think of a question afterwards, that's all good. You can email us or call us. Um, and as I said in the beginning, we will be sending out um this webinar recording. So I know some people had to leave early and things, and some people joined a little late. That's absolutely fine. You'll be able to catch up on everything tonight in your own time. Um, but yeah, that's uh everything from me as well. Well, thank you for joining and uh, hopefully we see you soon and good luck with everything. Bye.